the church, the body of Christ, our family, the people you're around every day, the people that you know that you're close to, most of the time, is it something that you see that it's easily to feel unrighteous than it is to be righteous? Yeah, no, absolutely, because we, we have the tapes. We have history <laughs> as sinners. We, we are, um, uh, man, we are recovering <laughs> sinners. Um, what do they call it? Recovering alcoholics? Yeah. 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 So we're, we're basically um, being trained in righteousness. We're learning our new identity. We are born again, born from above, new creatures, new creation. But we still have memories. We still have a sinful nature that we have to crucify daily. We have to die to self. And so I, we have to be reminded of who we are because the thing about sin is sin, it has no consciousness. Sin has no... Uh, in any way, it has it has no um, it, it has no awareness of of consequences. Sin is at the moment it's instant gratification, yeah. and sin makes you forget who you are. And so, when you indulge in sin, you're you're rejecting who you really are. And so, people have to be told we we need the spirit of truth to liberate us. Yeah. It's the spirit of truth where the spirit of the Lord is. There's freedom. The scripture says. And that freedom is we need to be free to be who we were created to be. And I have to cleanse myself with the word of God, the washing of the word. That's another uh, verse that talks about how the word can be cleansing. It's water. Yeah. It purifies our minds because in my natural state, I don't see myself as righteous. In my natural sinful nature, I know I'm very aware of my limitations. I'm very aware of my humanity apart from God. And so most people are. And uh, so we have to truly be renewed in our mind to see ourselves the way God sees us. Yeah. Now, we again, what I said on Sunday, we got to see God correctly. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, you, were, you mentioned your daughter, and I think about kids, right, children. Naturally, you love your children and they want nothing more than to be right with you. They want to be close to you. They want to be connected to you. That's how it is. That's how it's supposed to be. And if we neglect them and if we mistreat them and if we intimidate them and we're not loving and caring and protective and all those things that we should do as fathers, then we condition them not to want to be close. We condition them to... Uh, basically close themselves off yeah. from us we condition that and and that's really sad bro because now, now they start seeing us as dictators they start yeah. seeing us as controlling they start seeing us a certain way and it affects our connection bro that's exactly what happens with us yeah, with god for sure is that because of our sin it separates us and we don't we, we have a huge chasm and, and gap between us and the father and so we need the scripture to teach us the heart of the lord who he is, to see him cor correctly, and then also, Lord, how do you see me? And it's there's so many references in Scripture, man, where it's like the the angel that went to Gideon and he called him a mighty warrior, and Gideon's like, I am yeah. not a mighty warrior. I'm the I'm I'm a part of the weakest clan in <laughs> among the clans. You know, I'm the I'm the weakest among them. And how do you see me as a mighty warrior? And, and God sees what we don't see. And so, and even with Jeremiah, when, when he was called to be a prophet, he said, I'm too young. And the Lord said, don't say that you're too young. Yeah. And um, so the way we see ourselves is important and it, it does impact how we relate to God. And, um, but yeah, I know that a lot of people struggle with their identity. That's, yeah. it's an identity For issue, sure. bro. So you think that most people have unrighteous behaviors or character because they feel unrighteous? Yeah. You think that's the fruit of that? If I if I feel unrighteous, I'm gonna make unrighteous decisions. Yeah, I'm gonna walk in unrighteousness. I'm gonna make unrighteous choices. Yeah. So the key to people that are living in sin mm -hmm. is like you said, they don't see themselves as righteous. So they're gonna produce unrighteousness because that's how they feel. Yeah. So if if I if exactly. I grow up and I and I'm seeing a pattern in my life of unrighteousness, it's probably the way I'm viewing God and the way God views me. Yeah. And so that's what I want to be clear is that we battle with this yeah. unrighteousness and righteousness. Yeah. And you were, you pulled out that where a lot of times the first thing I want to do when I feel unrighteous, I want to get back to righteous by going to works. 
Right. I want to do more for him so that I can get back into his standards. Exactly. Get back into that standing, that right standing with God. Yeah. And so I'm going to serve more, give more, uh, pray more, fast more. Yeah. I start going to works mode with the wrong intention to become righteous when it's already been paid for. Exactly. And I love how you broke mm -hmm. down. It's a gift. Yeah. Righteousness is a gift. That's right. And I've been given gifts that I didn't have to pay for. Mm -hmm. And that was the beauty of what you were saying is the gift that he gave didn't cost you anything, but it cost him everything. Exactly. And for me to give you a gift and I buy you whatever I give you, you can look at that gift and say, this didn't cost me anything. Someone paid the price for that for me. Right. Whether it's a shirt, shoes, whatever the hat, whatever it is, there yeah. was something that was a cost for that yeah. to get you that. Yeah. And as Christians, we can't ever forget what was paid just because it was a gift. Mm -hmm. And I was, yeah. I was in that, you know, on the way up here, I was praying about that because I was like, Lord, what takes me out of un what takes me out of righteousness or what? No, no. What keeps me in righteousness? Mm. And he was telling me, you have to remind yourself what it cost. Yeah. In your relationship with God, your intimacy, your closeness depends on if you believe what he's done for you. Mm -hmm. And so if I don't go there and I know you said there's either I can feel this low or I can feel this high. Where's the medium in this? Like right. I've got it all together. Am I a slum? What pride, am I, you yeah, know? Pride or pity. Pride yeah. or pity. You're in that little place, but the yeah. best place to keep you away from pride or pity is being in honor and, res and reverence of right. who he is. Right. Because if I recognize that that gift cost him his life, mm -hmm. cost him his, his body, everything he went through, it keeps me in a state of humbleness to see him that way. And I think that a lot of times, instead of going to that place of holiness and purity and, and on our knees face to face with the Lord, we go into the works mode. We say, yeah. you know what? I'm going to do more to yeah. be approved by God. And we've seen our kids do that, try yeah. to do more to please us because right. we are trying our best to show them the perfect model. Because sometimes we hide our love. Yeah. I've done it before. Like, with, I can't... With, withhold it, you mean? Yeah, withhold it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We withhold it, yeah. yeah. Like, I can't give it to you because I feel like you're not doing the right thing. But God didn't do that. Yeah. And we have to learn the nature of God and His character that no matter how unrighteous we have be have, are and have become he sees us as righteous not sinners you know this is a this is a relationship right. between us and the lord when you yeah. give your life to christ and we surrender our life to jesus and truly marry who he is and, and have this communion with him that's when we become righteous yeah you know it's like you preached it before that condemnation we know that we are already mm -hmm. condemned. The one that's going to take us out of condemnation is who he was, Jesus. Right. And after condemnation is removed, then we become righteous. And then in exactly. his right, but it's not our righteousness. Nope. It's his righteousness that keeps us righteous. So we stay under the umbrella of his righteousness. We become righteous. We walk away from the umbrella of righteousness. Then we, we start walking back in unrighteousness, even though it was paid for. But it's us that walks away. It's not him that walks away. Yeah. And I, I think, yeah, exactly, man. It's, it's an identity thing, man. And, yeah. and it also... That's why faith is so important because Romans chapter one, I think we read this last week, 16, it says, uh, and 17, it says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. And that's key, right? Believes to the Jew first and also to the, to the Greek. 17 says, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith as it is written the righteous shall live by faith so it's by faith and so sure. in, in order for us to live in our righteousness we have to live in our righteousness by faith and so that's why faith comes by hearing the word of god like we need faith faith is is what energizes us yeah. uh, faith is is our belief that we feel the fl the the fan of, and the flame right we fan the flame of, of faith i yeah, should yeah, say yeah. We have to continue to believe because if we stop believing, the default is is our sinful nature. Yeah. And so, yeah, bro, it's it's um, it's it's our identity, our status. It is a gift. And the thing that I mentioned about grace and and righteousness is that grace is is a gift from the Lord. So is righteousness. And and the grace is that He saved me. For by grace you have been saved through faith. So. It's the grace of God, the loving kindness, the mercy, the forgiveness. It's that God is for me, that he snatched us out of hell. He, he rescued us, but he didn't just rescue us. 
by the gift of righteousness, he empowers us to live as as he does, yeah. as he did, and as as he is. And so the righteousness is the correctness of thinking as there's another definition of righteousness which says as we ought to be. Like the gift of righteousness is the gift to be like him. Yeah. You know, grace saved me from my past, but the righteousness gives me the gift to be to live presently as he is, but also in the future as he is, to become righteous. Yeah. The gift of grace is the gift to become righteous, bro. Oh, I'm sorry. The gift of righteousness is the gift to become like Jesus. Yeah. That's really what it is. And when you see that, it, it's it's a blessing because there's so much patience <laughs> that's coming from the Father because it's like you say to someone, you are righteous in Christ, and and if you... If all you do is see what what you see and the evidence, you know, stacked against that person that yeah. that person's a sinner, if that's all you see is their faults and their mistakes, you're like, no, that person's not righteous sure. based on what they've done. And then the Lord's like, no, he's righteous based on what God's done, what yeah. Jesus has done. And then as you believe that, you become it. It's it's a, it's a wild thing, and I'm and I'm 44 years old, old enough to know that this works <laughs> because you know, if I'm 20 years old talking about, I'm the righteousness of Christ. I, I don't know if I believe it yeah. until, because I'm still, you know what I'm saying? I'm still growing up. I'm still yeah. learning. And I remember studying this in my, my twenties and my thirties. And I'm thinking, man, how is this true? I know that I'm a sinner in need of salvation, but how is it that God calls me righteous, but I'm 44 and <laughs> it's a sweet spot because I believe it. <laughs> you yeah, know what I'm saying? For sure. And I'm not trying to live. I'm trying to live based on what the truth says, but I'm seeing fruit of, of, yeah. of the truth is what I'm saying. 